Hello and welcome to the Chris Terrell Podcast. My name is Chris Terrell and welcome to the first episode of Maintenance Mondays. Uh, the, this podcast, Maintenance Mondays, is going to be designed for those of you that are approaching or who are in the maintenance phase of weight loss. I wanted to create a resource that provides information for those of us that are continuing the journey. Because when you, when you slide into maintenance, when you get there, you probably have had the same realization that I did, which is that you've just found the bottom of another mountain on the other side. You know, the, the peak of one mountain is the base of the next one, it seems. And you realize that your journey is far from over. And I don't know if there's quite enough information out there for those of us that are in that phase. And, and I'm in it myself. You know, I've been maintaining now for a year and it's been great. But, it, you know, I've learned a lot since I've been maintaining. And I can see how it is. It's its own battle. Very much so. It's its own battle. And, and I've run into that with other people that I've worked with as clients. I've even taken on a few who are approaching or who are in maintenance to guide through that process. So what I wanted to talk about today in Maintenance Mondays is the concept of reverse dieting. This is what I did. When I hit my target weight, I knew that I wasn't going to keep eating at a caloric deficit. All right, that was the plan. But I didn't just immediately the next day just start adding food back in. I was very careful, like, okay, let's be methodical about this. I've been researching reverse dieting for now about a year, and I felt like I'd really wrap my head around it. I had practiced with multiple maintenance breaks, transitioning into maintenance and out of maintenance. And so I was like, I need to be methodical about it, though. I wasn't tracking when I hit my goal weight because I, was, I could pretty much intuitively eat in at a deficit because I was very, I was just leaning on my routines, honestly. And my routines were keeping me in a caloric deficit. So what I decided to do was to slowly increase my calories and to go back to tracking. So I actually tracked more diligently during my reverse dieting phase than at any point in my weight loss journey. Because I really wanted to do it. Like there was no like, oh, I feel like I'm obligated to track. No, I truly and genuinely wanted to track. I wanted the data because I knew I need to know what my maintenance number is. And let, let me explain why reverse dieting is so important and why I took such a slow and methodical approach to it. When you're looking at the formulas that indicate what your, what your maintenance number is, your total daily energy expenditure number is, there's a lot of variables that go into it, you know, because your total daily energy expenditure is a moving target, which you more than likely learned on your weight loss journey if you did a calorie-based slow and steady version. But the other thing that I learned it, through, through research is that your body's individual metabolic needs are going to potentially be different if you spent a long time being overweight. And that was really shocking to understand that. I, I did not realize that, that spending a lifetime of being overweight means that I would need to consume less calories than somebody who had never gained weight in the first place, even if we were the same size and worked out exactly the same. Is this an absolute? No. But I knew it was a very real possibility. And I didn't want to take a chance of needlessly gaining weight back by, by eating too, many, too much food. And so what I started to do was I would take 100 calories a day and I would add that to my budget. And then I'd see what happened for a week. And then I'd add another 100 calories to my day. I had a theoretical number in mind. I used enough of the calculators to come up with a number. But then I took that methodical approach of every few weeks adding a teeny bit of calories and just watching to see what happened. After the first few weeks, I stopped changing it every week and I just settled in on a number. So I was eating about 300 calories, 400 calories a day higher than my uh, deficit number. And I waited for weeks at a time to see what happened. And then when I would see like, okay, the scale is fluctuating because I was also now really seeing fluctuations that I had not seen on my weight loss journey. So I, I realized I've got to take weight measurements and look at two week periods of time. So I had to look at it as a trailing two weeks. What does the last two weeks of data always tell me? And so I started weighing in religiously every Monday and looking at that. I have to do the occasional midweek check-in, but quite honestly, I found once a week was fine because by this point, I was very conditioned to, when it comes to stuff with the body, at a minimum, 
you look at two or three weeks. Anything less than that is just guessing because we just don't have enough factual information to make an educated choice on what we should change. So as I did that, I discovered I could eat a lot more than I thought I could because my energy output had increased. What ended up happening, though, is I reached a certain point where the average of my variance had gone up by about four or five pounds. And I was okay with that. The reality is I didn't need to hang at 165 as my standard. It was more of like if 165 is going to be my low point. And so I've given myself a 10 pound window to land within. If I see 175, I have a plan. If I see 165, I have a plan. I know how I react based on what I see on those two. And I just want to bounce back and forth between there. I was able to find that range by doing reverse dieting. I actively reverse dieted for about three months where I just took my sweet time working my way up and then I eased off of tracking and solidly into intuitive eating. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one here. I'm going to keep these maintenance Mondays kind of short, but I plan to go a little bit more into the intuitive eating concepts. So if you are interested more about the intuitive eating concepts and wondering like, well, what sort of strategy or approach should I take once I've reached my goal weight? Make sure you're part of my maintenance Facebook support group. Um, I'm going to have the link. I'll have a podcast post in there. So if you want to give me feedback in a way that I'll see it very easily and won't get lost in the shuffle, make sure you're a member of that group. You do need to be approaching maintenance or in maintenance to be in that group uh, because I want to keep the information in there uh, very hyper-focused on this particular phase of the journey. But I'm doing this as part of the regular Chris Terrell podcast set of episodes because some of you might want to know this information. You might want to know what is coming down the line, what is coming for you a year or two later, because you might be like me. I wanted to know what it was going to be like at the end so I could mentally be preparing for what I had coming up ahead. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go and wrap it up here. If you're looking for some more support or help, make sure you check out all my other free content. You can find a link to that at ChrisTarrowCoaching.com. I've also got links to it in the show notes, which you can find. And again, if you're not part of the maintenance Facebook support group, check that out. I'm going to have a link to it in the show notes, and you can find a link to it under the free content section of ChrisTarrowCoaching.com. Have a great week. So glad you're here. I will see you on Tuesday for Tactical Tuesdays and then yet again on Friday for the regular episode of the Chris Terrell Podcast.